there's something about Guerlain, the way that they put their fragrances together. For me, they're just done so well most of the time. Guys, in this video, I'll be showing you the fragrances that I own from the house. The ones that I have owned in the past, but not at the moment, will also be mentioned. And I also will mention a few that I've got my eye on, maybe that will be added to my collection in the future. If you are a fan of the house, I hope you'll find this video useful. If you are looking to get into the House of Guerlain and their fragrances, this could be a useful video to you. So stay tuned to find out more. What's going on YouTube? Raj here. I hope all of you out there are doing well. Uh, today, you know, I'm going to be focusing on one brand, my favorite house, Guerlain. I recently did a fragrance collection video where I mentioned all of the fragrances that I own at the moment. So I'll leave a link like in the video or down below or up in the eye section. So if you want to see every fragrance that I own at the moment, check it out. And um, I also have different playlists on my channel, one that is dedicated to Guerlain and also other, a few other brands like Tom Ford and Dior and Frederick Marle. And um, yeah, I'll leave a link down below to, to a couple of the playlists as well if you want to check those out. So let's just get straight into it. So I'm going to start off talking about these three. Now, first of all, <laughs> I hope these don't fall out of my hand. Uh, I don't know if there's like a name for this collection, the masculine collection or, or whatever, but these are these three are the ones that are targeted towards men, marketed towards men. But obviously, you know, if you're a fragrance enthusiast, you will know that you can do whatever you want, wear whatever you like. That is that is um, that is the like one of the golden rules of wearing fragrances, I think. Let's start with this one. Landstand de Guerlain, which I believe means the moment of Guerlain, something along those lines. And as I said, I used to own the EDP, which used to be called the O Extreme or Extreme version. And for me, one thing that I really like about this is that it retains a lot of what I really love in the Eau de Parfum. It lightens it up, it freshens it up. There's cocoa, there's patchouli, there's dry woods in here. There's a little bit of spices as well. And there's some sort of citrus note. Could probably is a bergamot. Guerlain used bergamot a lot. That just binds everything together and gives it this airiness. I get a lot of really good comments with this, with this fragrance, with all of these Guerlains to be, to be fair. In fact, Guerlain, Guerlain fragrances may be my most complimented fragrances in my collection. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, it's always good to get a compliment. Um, yeah, worth bearing in mind. This is a really classy fragrance. It doesn't have the depth of the Eau de Parfum. And I'll be honest with you, when I bought this one, I was kind of a little bit disappointed. I thought, well, it lacks that depth, that patchouli note, that really chocolatey vibe, or so much more pronounced and emphasized in the EDP. Whereas this one, it makes sense that they've stripped it down. They have just separated some of the ingredients and given them a little bit of space. But I was left sort of craving the uh, EDP. It's quite dry. It is quite almost, um, it's like a quiet, confident type of fragrance, you know, something that is a really nice trait to have in a man, I think. And um, yeah, this does it in liquid form. Vetiver. The ingredient vetiver is a tall, long grass. You'll find it in tropical countries, um, parts of Asia, in Haiti as well. They extract the oils uh, or they steam distill the roots, I guess, to get the essential oil. But I think the leaf itself is also sometimes used in some fragrances. I'm gonna do a little battle between Guerlain's vetiver and Carvin's vetiver, which actually came out before this one. So stay tuned for that one. If you're interested in that video, maybe I'll boost it up the, uh, the, the pecking order of videos that I need to make. This one, you know one thing I really love about fragrances, especially when you own them for a, for a longer period of time, and that's something I'm gonna to touch on later on in the video, is that you get to have just more experiences with them. So whenever I review fragrances, I sometimes will have a sample or a, or a decant. 
Um, obviously, having a bottle and wearing it as much as you can, going through half a bottle, a full bottle, is the best way to experience a, a fragrance and review it. And you get more experiences. So I've traveled with this fragrance. I've been to humid countries with this fragrance. Uh, I wore this in Cuba earlier this, this year. The humidity in the air, that sunset, the, uh, the, sorry, that the sun uh, mixed in with that moisture in the air really, really made this fragrance shine. I wore a lot of this liberally. I love the fact that this is thick, oily, grassy, but also there's a freshness in here, which is really nice, a spicy quality as well. It's very masculine. It's very, it feels like uh, it has a tingly effect, you know, on your nose when you inhale it. Almost like when you were to inhale like a Vicks Vaporub or some kind of menthol or something like that. It has that effect on the nose sometimes, um, mainly in the opening. The dry down becomes ultra smooth, which I actually really appreciate. And it takes you for a jungle, uh, for a journey. You are in the jungle with this fragrance, surrounded with uh, lush green leaves and grass. It's a very, very beautiful fragrance, I have to admit. Moving on to the next one, and this may actually be my favorite of this trio. This one is Heritage, or Heritage, depending on how French you're feeling that day. And uh, what, it, what this really reminds me of is, uh, you know a lot of YouTubers have that pose in their videos where it's like, oh my god, that kind of pose, that Home Alone, was it one or two? Maybe one, where uh, it was it Kevin splashes on his father's aftershave and <laughs> starts screaming. That's how like the opening of this fragrance is. It might shock you a little bit. Now I've had this fragrance for Actually, I don't know how many years, but it's probably been a couple of years. And with the exposure of oxygen into the fragrance, it has mellowed out that opening. A fresh bottle, you will get a blast. You've got lavender in there. You've got bright, sharp citruses in there. There's also a patchouli note, which is quite noticeable. There is a ambery quality here for sure. I mean, the bottle and the color maybe be a, a bit of a giveaway. It has a very autumnal feel to it. Super classy and quite serious. There's no like sweetness in here. There's no um, lemon and lime that just dominates. It's not a citrus cologne. It is actually a serious man's fragrance. You know, it's got depth. It's got real layers to it. And you know what, if anyone is watching this video who wants a more of a, a classic, almost like an old school type fragrance, um, and a great example of one, Heritage is the place to go. And one thing I like about this fragrance also, I'm just doing a little fresh spray in the air. The lavender comes through really, really nicely. And one thing that I like about this fragrance is that it does something different that other fragrances don't do. I don't suffer from like confidence problems. I'm not saying I'm like the most confident guy in the world, but I feel like there are a lot of people out there who may have that issue. And I think what this fragrance does for me, it makes me just stand, it makes me just stand a little bit taller. I feel like I'm on my A game with this one. And so for, for some people out there, fragrance can be a tool to elevate your mood, your confidence levels, and I'm all for that. Okay, so as I said, this video is about past and present. And one fragrance that I used to have in the past was Guerlain uh, Om, Om Intense, which is a beautiful fragrance. It's been a long time since I've smelled that one. And I think back in the day, I was a little bit more um, hasty, or I don't know what the word is, impatient. You know, I didn't want my collection to grow like it used to be and how it used to, how I used to buy fragrances. I wanted to put a lid on things, but what that means is that there was only so much I could own and I wanted to try lots of new things. So I would buy things, sell them, buy new fragrances and this one just went out my collection very fresh i loved it 
you know, that uh, sparkling uh, lime notes, very uplifting, great for spring and summer. Um, obviously, the, everyone talks about, you know, the, the mojito kind of chords. It's in there, it's beautiful. And maybe I need to bring it back into the collection on a permanent basis. Right, so I just mentioned a fresh fragrance and it's time to move on to the Aqua Allegoria line. I did uh, a video where I spoke about uh, quite a few Aqua Allegoria fragrances in one video. So again, check out the playlist, check out that video if you want to find out a little bit more about fragrances in that line. They're all about, they're, they're all like uplifting, quite singular, uh, linear. Some of them have a little bit more depth than others. Um, lots of fresh citruses in there, neroli, white florals, fruitiness, and Herba Fresca is, for me, mainly about this green grassy sweetness. You really do picture yourself in the middle of a field, the wind is blowing around you, you're wearing a linen shirt, it's gr uh, there's, there's, there's greenness um, all around you, it is slightly sweet and sugary. There is also, could be like a, could be like a, you know, like a, a kind of gin and tonic, a juniper kind of note in there. Something that I've always wondered what exactly that is. It gives me the feeling of a, an ice, ice cold cucumbery uh, gin, something along those lines. Yeah, so fresh. I might do a little spray actually, just to, it's always nice. Sometimes in the winter, in the cold weathers, you, you try, you normally will wear fragrances that are heavier, have notes like oud and leather, but sometimes just switching it up in, uh, in warm weather and wearing a typically a summery spring fragrance is really nice. Maybe a touch of lemon tea, uh, a touch of eucalyptus maybe, or maybe there are just accords, you know? These are just things that come to my mind. They may not necessarily be in this fragrance. Really great, worth checking out. So that's the only Aqua Allegoria that I own at the moment, but I did used to own Limon Verde, which was really wonderful, very green and uplifting. In similar style, I guess, to Herba Fresca, there was a lime note in there that really was the dominating fragrance. So refreshing. I remember wearing this in Spain was chilling in a villa with some friends and wore the hell out of this fragrance. It was really, really lovely. I, 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 I you know, I, I do like it. I wouldn't say it's a love for me. It wasn't one of those where I would bring it back into my collection. Probably not, but I'm glad I got to experience. Limon Verde is one of those that has such clarity in its ingredients. And that's actually, to be honest, what can be said for a lot of the Aqua Allegoria lineup of fragrances. You, if they're giving you mandarin or grapefruit, you will smell that so clearly uh, in like that in the highest definition, and it's great. It's why I think the Aqua Allegoria line is one of the best out there for freshies. The art and the materials is a range of fragrances that Guerlain have um, categorized as maybe their high end perfumery the highest expression, you could say, something along those lines. It's called La Ella Matia, and I think this range was probably, I would say maybe single-handedly, was the range of fragrances that got me hooked on the brand. I have owned quite a few, and I'll mention them. At the moment, I have Queer Beluga, which is this one, and also Bois d'Armini, which I'll show in a second. But I really like the fact that Guerlain finally changed the packaging with these ones. They finally um, changed things up when it came to the atomizer and the bottle looks a little bit sleeker now. It's taller, thinner, it's really wonderful. And look, it has an atomizer. Before it had those really annoying puffy thingies, whatever they're called, I'm sure there's a name. You could barely get anything out from it. From this, you just spray and that's it. It's very simple. I don't know why they didn't do that in the beginning. But this fragrance is it is it really is something else. For me, it is super luxurious, soft, uh, ambery, a little bit powdery. There is a leather note. I believe Guerlain tried to create this white suede accord. 
I think there is a little bit of that in there. You can almost feel, you know, that you're you, you're wearing this super supple um, suede jacket that just molds to the contours of your body. And suede in itself has a very, very unique scent. It smells great. I really like the smell of suede. This fragrance has a floral heart in there as well. I'd have to go back and check the notes. I wouldn't say there's any that really come to my mind, but there's like a sweet floral accord in there. It is really classy. Some people, you know, from a men's perspective, might find this to what this one to be moving, uh, leaning towards the feminine side. Maybe, who knows? I find this one smells fantastic on my skin, and that's the most important thing. Armenian woods, I guess, is the literal translation of this. Um, it is designed to be based on the concept of Armenian paper, which are incense, little papers of incense infused with a scent. I've smelled Armenian paper, or papier d'armini, I think it's actually called. And this is really quite similar to that. Kind of strange, actually, how... Maybe not strange, but just really really cool how they've managed to replicate that scent sweet smoky benzoin woods dry woods smoked vanilla what i is amazing i've had this for a long time if you've been following my channel for a while you would have seen this little atomizer pop up several times you might be wondering how have you not finished it by now but you know i'm wearing loads of samples and i go to my bottles and then little like smaller decants so it takes takes time but this is golden this is ambery this is maybe a touch of uh, warm honey in here it, it's really really beautiful the thing with what i like about this this uh, this line in general is that on the whole they're quite yeah in fact all of the gourmands i would say are not overly sweet maybe tonka imperial for some of you might be a little bit overly sweet but for this one i really really think that it is a nice balance between um, having gourmand sweet notes but not becoming candy like sweet and childish it's really grown up and um, has a resinous feel to it which i really enjoy guadamini well worth checking out so as I said, I owned a few others from the line, Spiritus du Blavigny, uh, and Tonka Imperial. Also, there was a myrrh-based fragrance got that got discontinued called Mir et Delire. I think that's how you say it. I think it's supposed to rhyme. The thing is, I can't remember a thing about that fragrance, if I'm honest. I don't think I disliked it. I just... Well, I don't know what happened. I've just completely forgotten about it one of those. Uh, Spiritus du Blavigny, very well known here in the Fragcom. Um, it's all about this boozy vanilla with cedar. Quite simple. Some people feel like it's maybe a little bit basic. I think it's amazing and there's actually a little bit more depth in that fragrance than you might think. Um, I love the way that this, the, 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 the vanilla is like completely has soaked up the, the rum, you know, this booziness, oak barrels, woody, damp woods, um, damp uh, barrels that have soaked up alcohol and have been infused with vanilla. That's kind of what you get. It's so amazing. I might, I think I'll have to get that back into my collection or maybe Tonka Imperial. Sticky sweet and maybe the sweetest perhaps of the uh, La Elamatia line. Um, a great example of a tonka bean. Really, you get a great feel for what tonka is all about. Um, powdery, maybe cherry-like, um, sweet. There is a nutty quality in there as well. It's uh, quite a multifaceted note and yeah, a great fragrance. Mitsuko, a beautiful fragrance. One that, if I'm honest, just did not quite work out on my skin. Um, beautifully composed, fruity, peach, uh, lots of florals. Maybe that combination of the peach and the uh, dense heart of florals, the rose in there, the jasmine, kind of gave me a bit of a headache. I had the Eau de Parfum version. I think 
it could be just a skin issue. I could pick up on the quality. Mitsuko honestly wasn't for me. Gourmand Kokan is another gourmand from Guerlain, the clues in the name. And I really enjoyed this fragrance. It is quite sweet. It does maybe push my boundaries of what I like in uh, sweet fragrances. There is a chocolate note in there. I believe I'm going off memory here. There's a little bit of rose, some spices, and there was a, spi uh, a smoky, a slightly smoky quality in there. It's been quite a long time since I've smelled this fragrance, and maybe next time I'm at the I'm at the Girland counter, I'll have to try this one, guys. If you have tried it, let me know your thoughts. Um, would I buy that one again? I think, I think I would probably divert my money or put the money into a, a, a art materials bottle. But it was great to experience. I do, I did like the quality of this one, and yeah, the chocolateiness. Chocolate is one of my favorite notes and fragrances, so maybe that was one of the reasons why I loved it so much. Great fragrance. Mon Precieux Nectar is quite possibly one of the greatest fragrances I've ever tried. Now, why don't I own it? Well, that's because I am stupid and I shouldn't have sold that one. I do regret that selling that one actually. As I said, I like to, you know, move fragrances around and um, nowadays I don't do like do that. I prefer the stability. And I definitely need to bring this one back into the collection. It performed so well on my skin. Uh, from memory again, you know, I could go back and watch my review or watch what I said, but just going off memory, because these fragrances do last in the memory. Neroli, I remember being in there. There was this wonderful, sweet, uh, slightly powdery accord. Um, and it had almost honey tinged, a little bit floral, but powdery also, I guess. I would have to check what the notes are, but wow, this one was... Um, maybe a bit of almond and like a biscuity type thing. These are, I'm trying to go deep into my memory. Yeah, it's a beauty. And finishing things off with this collection, which I believe is called the Les Parisiennes. Derby or Derby, however you want to say. Really beautiful fragrance. Really, really beautiful fragrance. This is masculinity in a bottle. A woman, if they want to wear this one, yeah, absolutely go for it. I just think... Um, this is for a man. I really just think that leather, woody, oak moss, the depth in here, the spices, almost like a tea accord, you know? It kind of does remind me in some ways of black tea. I think also what I like about this fragrance is that it is quite classic in style. It's very strong and green, and you know, as I said, uh, leathery as well. Uh, almost like sitting in, in, in uh, you've been for a long walk in the forest and then you're into your new car with a leather interior. Kind of like that. Really fantastic. Okay, to finish things off, uh, a discontinued fragrance. So if you guys are new to the world of Guerlain, you probably won't see this one around. This one is Arsene Lupin Dandy. Violet, I believe, was one of the main notes. From memory, that was the one that kind of stuck out in my mind. Powdery, floral... Um, maybe a note that I need to explore a little bit more. There was also a lot of dryness and a very woody base from memory. In terms of new ones that I would like to get, I think definitely something from the uh, L'Homme Ideal line, maybe the EDP. Uh, as I mentioned, Le Bleu, Eau de Parfum. Maybe uh, repurchasing a few that I've already mentioned. Uh, I really like their Patchouli one, Patchouli Ardon. I did have, a, I did a video on that, first impressions. I think I need to get a, a larger size decant to test, but I thought that was really excellent. Guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the House of Guerlain. I love having you on board with me. Thank you so much for the support. Um, I have a Buy Me A Coffee page if you would like to contribute. That would be much appreciated. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Bye.